Zoom Sample Track, the Brook Producers SP1200, a mythical sampler, which is difficult to find. And after months of trying, I finally got my hands on one. Hi, my name's Drew Grit, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the sample track, giving my first impressions, running some samples through it that I'm gonna be giving away for free, and trying to answer the question, is it worth the hype? But why is it hyped in the first place? Number one, Strange History. Released in 1999, this was Zoom's attempt to snatch a bit of the sampler market dominated by Robert Lin's Akai MPC series and Emu's SP12 and 1200 products. Meaning it has been around for a long time, but has only seemed to have appeared on most producers' radars in recent years, of which many have been surprised by its usability, considering it's been practically unknown. MG The Future has a video where he goes as far as to say that this could be proof of parallel universes because he was looking for samples in shops around this time and still never heard of it which to me is amazing because I'm not really much of a conspiracy guy like I couldn't care if the world is flat or shaped like a Toblerone but music production conspiracies oof that's what I'm talking about <laughs> number two short supply low sales has led to that classic supply and demand dynamic which makes something appear higher quality because it's hard to get the fact that it's incredibly difficult to find made me feel like I needed one as they don't come up for sale very often and if you don't believe me, I challenge you to find one for sale that isn't coming from Japan for twice the price. At least where I am in the UK, where there isn't a single one up for sale online at the time of recording this video. This gives it that childish, ooh, I have one and you don't factor. Number three, the price. It retailed for $200 when it was released and goes for roughly that amount in the current climate, meaning that although you're not getting a great deal, at least the price isn't extortionally inflated, which is very appealing for a producer like myself because as much as I would love to go full Pete Rock mode with an SP1200, you'll see me lying under a bridge smoking Gorilla Glue before you catch me paying 8k, yes 8,000 for an SP1200. You can suck my my fascination with this device was instantly satisfied thanks to the completely bizarre samples already saved on mine. Useless. Can't let go. Only me left. Money. Have a drink. Daddy. Gone. Couldn't. Knife. 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 Important information alert, that's what's saved to the internal memory of the sampler, but you can get a smart media card and a reader and upload samples straight from your laptop. Kevin Flowers has a great video on it, which I'll leave in the description. But one thing that I didn't see any information about online is that the little silver sticker locks the card, which led to me sitting on terminal sweating, following all different tutorials and nothing worked. And then I decided I'll just try taking the sticker off, see if that does anything and boom, fix the problem. Thank me later. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you five different ways of using this to run some samples through it. Number one is using one effect, but in order to do that, you need to load a sample in first, which requires special load internal until it gets to file, pick your file, press on load, choose where you wanna load it to. I wanna load it to bank three, button one, press that, load again, and now it's important. Six and a half hours later. It's already pretty low fi but I wanted to see what the effects on this could add to sort of get it even further into that realm. So in order to do that, we need to go pad enable and then It has a lot of standard stuff such as phaser, chorus, and all of that. There's 22 effects in total. I'll leave a list there. The one I like the most maybe is actually Dimension, which is some sort of stereo imager that's quite lo-fi in nature. And it sounds like this. The second method is using two effects via resample. The idea for this one is if you look here, it says lo-fi effect compressor underline. I thought initially that might be something similar to the vinyl sim famous on the SP303. However, I then realized that they're actually separate. The lo-fi effect and the compressor are different. One's on bank A and one's on bank B, so they're not one effect. The idea is I'm gonna try and combine them and see if it gets anything close to that famous vinyl sim compressor. We'll add the lo-fi effect first, press on pad enable, 
on it and press it. The filter on edit 2 and the vinyl sim on edit 1. Put it nice and low. In order to resample, you got to press record. Pick what grade you want. I'm going to put it at a standard. I'm going to select mono. And then if I press special and plus, it auto records, meaning I don't have to then trim the start and end. Resample enable. Press record and press. And stop. Turn that off. Pat the sign. Put it to two, pad assign again, and then we've got the original, and then the sorry, resample. Pretty lo fi there, so I'm going to do pad enable on that. Press B. Gets pretty lo-fi and gritty there and just pretty messed up which i quite like uh, is it the same as the vinyl sim not exactly the same obviously but still has some merit to it but yeah i think i would definitely play with that in the future method number three which is tuning down via the edit one pitch wheel the sample is here So in order to activate this, you have to press pad, tuning, and then select the pad. That one sounded good straight away, which surprised me, but uh, yeah, for some reason it starts at 5.55. Where is it? Uh, no. Why not zero? I really don't know, but uh, yeah, sort of play around. You can go really high. Real low. <laughs> real dirty and i believe that's part of the reason that it's got the bro producers sb 1200 nickname is because it's quite similar to the sliders pitching down on that so for method four i'm going to do something different i'm going to be using one chord and the scale function to make a chord progression this time i'm not going to load it off the card i'm going to load it from the input with just for a laptop in order to do that you have to press record pick what grade you want i'm going to pick lo-fi I'm gonna pick mono, I'm gonna set the auto record, and instead of pressing resample like last time, it's just record again. And then I need to press the sample on my laptop. Stop, pad assign to hear it. Pad assign again to put it somewhere. I wanna put it on bank three, sample one, press pad assign again, and now it's there. Now to put that chord across a scale, you press special, pad assign, pad assign again, now it's on scale, and here it's asking me where do you want to put the home, that home chord, that bass. If I put it there, then this will be up a semitone, this will be down, so I'm actually going to put it on six, because usually I only like it one or two up, and then the rest of them down. Then I press pad assign again, and we should hear it here. That is another example like the tuning wheel in the previous method that gets the sort of same aesthetic as the SP1200 garnering the nickname. And uh, yeah, if I just play around. Just... So last but not least, method number five, all I'm gonna do is run a sample through with just the low sample rip. In order to do that, it's the same as before, record, select the grade i'm going to go lo-fi this time i'm going to pick stereo pick the 
auto record. I'm gonna put it on two this time. Not ready to go, I just need to press record on the sample. So there we go. Plata sign. Select it there. I'm going to do is I'm going to play the just raw audio just to show the comparison. So there it is. If I press pad and you see level there, I press level and then the same pad, it'll show it's on 50. So I'm going to just crank that up. So as I said, that's pretty simple, but it's a good way of just giving some character to a sample without having to put in too much effort and can really sort of beef it up and make it really lo-fi. So is it worth the hype? Believe it or not, I'm gonna say no. I can't be sure yet because I still need to make a beat with it, which will definitely be a future video, but so far I have some issues. Number one, velocity. It doesn't have velocity sensitive pads, which is a massive blow to its potential and my enthusiasm to even make a beat with the device. The fact that it uses smart media cards, which are fairly rare, makes it a bit awkward. Whereas the SP404 range all uses SD cards, which are readily available, making it a more obvious choice among many, many other reasons. Number three, hype. Yes, literally videos like this, forum post, blog post, etc. If we're not honest about the shortcomings of the sample track, it's gonna get a lot more people interested in this device, which is gonna raise the price. And honestly, I can't support that because the more it goes over 200, the less it shines. Like anything over 200 is a stretch. Ultimately, this is not a must have device. Like if you missed the end of an eBay auction and it sold for 150, you don't need to be losing sleep over it. This video may have seemed like an advert for the Zoom sample track, but in reality, I wanted to make a video with the information that I wish I received before I purchased mine, which is you don't need it. However, that being said, I don't regret purchasing it. I am quite fond of it. It's kind of ugly, it's lesser known, and ultimately, in a world of SP404 lo-fi dominance, it's the underdog and needs some more representation and I'm happy to be a part of that. But more importantly, we did it. We hit 100 subs. But who cares about that? What really matters is, do you know that toy you had as a kid that went whoop, whoop. What is that absolute feat of engineering called? Because I want that to be my next big purchase. If you have any idea, leave a comment below, please. Lastly, all five samples are gonna be available on my Lipperman page, which I'll leave in the description. And I'll link another one of my videos here, which I think you might enjoy. And that's it. Thanks for watching.